Hi guys, welcome back to The Mist of Social Anxiety and Depression. Today's topic is going to be about YouTubing with social anxiety and depression. Um, some thoughts people who don't have social anxiety or depression seem to have is how can someone who suffers with these mental illnesses how can they talk on YouTube and broadcast to an unlimited number of strangers? Um, they seem to think it goes against the, 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 the idea that someone has social anxiety or would want to not speak out to an an infinite number of people um, and they'd want to keep everything inside as it were um, a lot of people who have no history of mental health issues or a lack of confidence or whatever simply have said that they they couldn't um have a YouTube channel if they couldn't, they wouldn't be able to create content for a wide audience. Um, it seems bizarre to them. So I can, I, I guess I can kind of understand uh, a little bit why they can't really understand how people like me would be able to. Um, to put the content out there. Um, or then also some people have sort of made it clear to me that I may be easily identifiable via Google search or whatnot. But my name isn't directly connected with this channel and it's not it's not you can't type in my name and this channel's going to come up you know it's and even the very fact that they think and I've suggested that it's easily identifiable that sort of says something in itself um sort of hints at that what I'm doing is shameful or I should be embarrassed about it or it's something that I don't want others to know about me. Um, if I had a broken leg, if I had a broken arm, if I had cancer, if I had leukemia, if I had any... Yeah, basically any other health issue, then I could proudly talk about it, and it would show strength, and it would be admired, and it would be courageous. There'd be no connection with. Oh my God! What if someone knows? What if someone finds out? Oh, they can find you on you on Google. Blah, blah, blah. But mental health is nothing shameful and I think it's therapeutic to speak about it and to get things off my chest and I think when I'm creating YouTube content I'm not aware that there is an audience I'm not aware that other people are going to watch it maybe they will watch the video maybe they won't but it's more about personal therapy and it's more like this helps me and if it can help anyone else even one person if even one person watches it and gets something out of it then I've made the difference that I wanted to make it's helped me and it's helped at least one other person that's it. That's all I've ever wanted with this channel. So, 
that's why I do it. I'm not trying to visualize speaking to millions of people. <laughs> um, yeah, so if I had physical illness, there'd be no there'd be no stigma stuck with attached to me t- discussing it in the public realm. Um, but because it's mental health, it's a bit of a taboo, but not for me. So, other things people without social anxiety have said. Um, uh, maybe it's not social anxiety. Maybe you're just shy. <laughs> That's the older generation's view. Um, you, you're just shy. Oh, he suffers with his shyness or whatever. The truth is, if you don't live it, if you don't live my life, you can't understand it. You just, you just can't. If you don't know my brain, you've never been inside my head. <laughs> you can't begin to understand it, so I can understand why you can't understand it. Do you know? Um, why don't you have social anxiety um, around people you know? That's what's been said to me. Oh, so and so was over in the house, and you never act like you're socially anxious when they're over. Perfectly normal. Um, but that's because they're not strangers anymore. I've met them a few times, and then it becomes normal. So my social anxiety only only really flares up around strangers perfectly comfortable in a room full of people I know (laughs) so social anxiety doesn't mean you're afraid of people you know (laughs) um, yeah so it's mainly around strangers or strange locations or situations that I'm not familiar with then it will act up and I'll be most affected Um, so yeah, for me, the the benefits of having a YouTube channel, number one, it's therapeutic. It lets me get things off my chest and clear my mind. Um, the possibility of my content helping others is probably number one priority. Um, if my content can help, even just one other person. If one other person gets one, one t- thing of value from this channel, then that's my job done. All I wanted to do is help other people who may need someone to relate to or some advice from or from an experience that I have lived. Another bit is it helps me work through different aspects surrounding social anxiety and depression. So it's, it's an outlet for getting things off my chest. Um, let me see if there's a few other points I noted that I wanted to include in this video. Um, yeah, you can't please everyone all of the time. You have to follow your heart and do what you think is best. Maybe it's unfair to expect others to understand your life with social anxiety and depression. Um, Because the, the thoughts you have and the life you are living inside your head is completely alien to them. And that's not their fault. Just like having social anxiety and depression isn't your fault. Um, I yeah, I've, I've I've sort of decided to make this channel a priority of mine. It's something I want to stay focused on and make it take a lot more serious because social anxiety and depression it's a big part of me, and I shouldn't have to hide that. 
So this is my channel, and I'm going to keep keep on at it. And for the people who can't understand why I want, would want to have my opinions and my face out there in YouTube land. <laughs> if it's not for them, it's not for them. I think it helps me, so I'm going to stick with it. Until next time, guys. See you later.